Wicked. Hey, thanks very much for letting me come and talk to you guys today. Um, I've come over from Western Australia. I work in local government, and um, I think the message I've heard a lot the last two days is you guys as scientists need people to help deliver your, uh, the results of your work on the ground, and I think the local government area and the community group area are a really good place for that. So that's kind of why I'm here. If I can get this thing to drive properly. That's all right. Calamanda. I'm going to do it from here. We're in Australia, you can see the dots. You guys should all come over and see us, so next time we have a conference. Um, so Perth, right, Calamander's on the hills, and we're on the interface between um, the urban high density areas and the bushland areas out the back. So literally from the middle of Calamander, kilometre behind you is National Park and thousands of square kilometres of uh, forest, and looking down you've got this urban area. So we've got a very high amount of a diversity and lots of different places to practice science. So, you know, give us a call. Um, interestingly, we have an amazing amount of retirees, and there's a, a, a figure here, and they come to the hills for some lots of, lots of health value. So I think there's a connection there. Uh, so there's a mosaic or aerial photo just showing the, the diversity of the high density to the, uh, to the west and the really um, the horticultural land to the east. So um, that's Kalamunda. Interestingly, we've also got the most treed canopy, uh, the most canopy of any local government in Western Australia or urban, you know, in the city. So that's pretty special for us. And you know, you can, um, you know, it's a science conference. You can check out the reference. It's a, it's a real life thing. Um, that's what we get to see in Kalamunda. I imagine the view's not too much different from up in the hills in Adelaide. Um, so here we go. We've got some great demographic information on um, on our website, and you can see that. I think it's the grey is the normal uh, or the Australian uh, average, West Australian average. We've got a lot of people in the 50 to 59, 60 to 69, 70 to 84 age bracket. They come up to the hills to retire and they just keep living for some unusual reason. I don't know why. Okay, so, you know, that's really good for us. From my point of view, I'm the Environmental Friends Group Officer. So I get to work with about 40 to 45 community groups, 120 are registered when it's planting season, it goes up to like 200. They all want to come and plant trees. Some of them have got great science knowledge. Some are retired um, science practitioners. Others are just, they think they know everything. And they need science to help them understand that maybe there's another way to do it, all right? So, um, you know, what do we do with science? Like, we, we actually consume science more so than do science. Let's just be really straight up about that. Um, I need to underpin the work I do with the community and to explain my existence to the senior management in a way which they can understand it, and they're not all scientists. I had the joy of doing uh, an ecology degree at Curtin University, so I can interpret the science and communicate that to our consumer residents, um, the main stakeholders for local government. Have no doubt, when a, sta when a local government wants to do something, it's doing it because the people who pay the rates and vote for the local councillors want them to do it. So if you can't align your science to the value proposition that the local government has, you're going to struggle to get it happening on the ground. That's probably my personal opinion, but you've got to align that value proposition, I think. Um, and so, yeah, we, we use uh, ground-based science, um, NRM strategies, WA strategy, national strategy, and the one here that I haven't got in is the intergalactic earth communication strategy. Mate, if there was one, we would be using it, all right? Um, what do I do, though? We get out there and we plant trees, we kill weeds, we put in erosion control, and we work with the community to train them how to do this stuff. So, you know, as well as roads, rates and rubbish, we actually do a little bit of science, just not too much. I think, you know, I don't think you can actually do science. There's something about that. Um, we use citizen science to get our volunteers involved, and it's great to hear the, um, was it the Echidna program, uh, Echidna CSI. There are so many different things that we use. Uh, we've attracted funding to do projects involving the Atlas of Living Australia. We use bird life for backyard bird count. Um, the Ag Department has got a um, pest reporter um, and a weed reporter. So, you know, we're trying all these different ways of getting science information into our decision-making frameworks. We also do work with uh, researchers. Um, if anyone has heard about uh, eagle research, Simon Chairman is doing some amazing research tracking wedge-tailed eagles. Where does a wedge-tailed eagle go? 
Simon tracked a wedge tail eagle that was born in the Pilbara, flew within its first year all the way to the very edge of South Australia, stayed for literally stayed for a day. He's got GPS satellite tags on these guys. Decided that you know didn't want to stay, came back to Western Australia. So you know I don't know if there's a bigger story in that, but we're using the science that Simon's doing to come out to uh, he's going to come to our community and explain to them why they should look after their bush why they should go into our national parks as part of our volunteer programs and protect them from weeds and rubbish and dumping because we've got wedge-tailed eagle nests in the national park and they're an amazing predator. Uh, we heard about uh, the impact of um, eagles and raptors on betongs, uh, the Wildlife Conservancy. So, you know, again, we're consuming science. We use people like Mike and Mandy Bamford who are eminent ecologists and, in, and do a lot of work uh, with the mining sector but they're also science communicators. So we're using them to get the message about how important science is to the community who are the beneficiaries of all this hard work that goes on that you guys are out there doing. So I've got another graph. We've actually got a bit of sciencey stuff here. I decided to measure the skills uptake on a Green Army project that ran between 2015 and 2018. We had five six-month projects where we had ten, a team of 10 young folk, 18 to 25, come out and do environmental NRM activities across our city. So we helped them do the work, but we also monitored their skills uptake. We did a pretty straightforward um, survey, but apparently surveying a group of people before they do the work and then giving them the same survey after they've done the work, which then measures their perception of skill or knowledge increase or decrease, is quite an unusual thing, which is why I like to show you the following graph, which is pretty hardcore science. But we do for, so we got a group of, we actually got 30 people behind each of these points, but what we get, we're able to show to our funders and our community and to our stakeholders is that if we get young people which don't have, or that don't have, NRM knowledge or skills and want it, if they go through our projects and they're exposed to the environment where they go and do all this NRM activity, they, they get spat out the other end with an increase in knowledge and skill. And we can prove that. I can then go to a funder and say, oh yes, I need to find out how I can train these retirees. Can I have $40,000 to, uh, to run a program? Excuse me, sir, how do you know that uh can you tell me that it's going to work? Well, yeah, we've actually got some evidence that our programs do have an effective component. Um, I think at the end of the day, I mean, there's a place for science, but it's really got to be hit on the ground. And if the, the simple stuff that we do can underpin the programs that we're rolling out at an on-ground level, then, then that works. Um, we're not doing high-level PhD stuff, but from a local government, government point of view, to work with our community, we need to distill the science, apply it in a way that is easy for people to understand, and then monitor how effective that is. So, I mean, we could have monitored the uh, survival of the plants that they're planting, we could have monitored the, the cover of weed density declining as they go through those projects. But to be honest, this is an area which isn't monitored very much and it certainly helps us get more money to continue this work. So if there's anyone out there doing social science or wants to get involved in some of this stuff uh, or has similar data that they might want to use, then yeah, we'd definitely love to hear from you. Um, on the other hand, if you want to come over to WA and play a bit of science, you've got a national project, um, call up City Kalamunda. We'll be interested in having you do some of your work on, on our reserves. They're pretty awesome. Thanks, Mick.